like 1995, our first art exhibit of the year was a show of masks. Our Sunday evening series continued January 7th with these three local writers. The Manitoba Writers Guild put together an extensive schedule for us. These two, plus Scott Olson, were visiting writers on that Saturday evening. Remember the entertainment coupon books? We were in one year. Stephen Hyten from Ontario was coming through on a book tour, so we paired him with our local Steve Lennon. Mira Saren and other WISC student volunteers came to heaven with the idea of a readathon as a fundraiser for a Burmese refugee student. We put together a 24-hour schedule and got lots of local established writers and new voices to take turns, including weather person Sylvia Kuzak, writer Carol Shields, Patrick Friesen, and musician Hugo Torres Saraceda. The event was a great success. The February exhibit was a show of large photographs from summer. Sue Proctor and friends brought a show of fun to heaven. An evening of dramatic readings and good theater discussions afterwards. Saturday evening, set up for a reading, waiting for the crowds to come. This is the last day of beachfront poetry. A show of large photos from Patricia Beach by me, Tim. Along the main wall, a 30-foot panorama of Patricia Beach. Each piece for sale simply or the whole piece as a unit, but some of the sections have already been bought. Those two with the poets above them. If you bought a section of each, you got your choice of a free poet. from the envelope. On the back wall, Muscle Beach. And in this corner, we have the tribe of kids. This could be a very popular photo. A lot of people like this one, and it has sold. Up in the front section, in this one, of course, my favorite. Hasn't sold yet, but a lot of people like it too. And in the very front, the cloud from heaven, Joe's favorite. So we're ready to rock here tonight and have an art and book cafe with readings by Judy and Pat Krauss, writer from Regina. Fabulous women. Afterwards, we want to have a show closing party and auction. See if I can sell more of these prints. So, any, day now, any minute now that door's going to open, the crowd's going to come trundling up to get their coffees, pies, cakes, cheese, what have you, and get settled. Extend that inhibition, that ability to inhibit yourself to some other things. Because I mean, after all, after all, you, yes, you don't, you don't well, kill the guy you really hate right because you know it's going to cause a lot of problems for him. So by the same extension, you, you like eating six eggs for breakfast. Yeah. Show is over. The beach is down.
crowd is restless and like yes. Yes. yes, I know about it. Our March exhibit showcased the work of two artist friends. That St. Patrick's Day was a busy one for us in heaven. In the afternoon, Nino Ricci came from the east and Tom Tamaro from the south. And in the evening, two wonderful writers of indigenous backgrounds. Another lively Zygote magazine launch on that Monday evening, March the 18th. Our ad in that Zygote issue was a call out. Sometimes our handouts had to be edited. We finally had our liquor license in time for Mike's launch. Our April exhibit was a wonderful show of photographs. We were proud to launch David Bergen's first novel. Here we are, we made it to heaven. Well, a lot of new things happening in heaven. New oven, lots of new food. Shows. New product. Some new book. We were glad to have CV2 use our space, and the editorial collective posed with the visiting writers. Local writer Kathy Kolibaba was joined by Patricia Stone on this Wednesday evening. These writers' chapbooks were submitted for the Heaven Chapbook Prize. Missing from this Sunday afternoon, April 14th reading were Margaret Sweatman, Wayne DeFair, and Anne Hart. Two visiting writers meet in heaven and get chummy. The Manitoba Writers Guild's annual book awards were held on Saturday, April 27th. Chapbooks kept on coming out and this uh, May 2nd chapbook launch included Tom Schmidt, missing from this photo. Des Kennedy came to us from BC and read about living things we love to hate. Regina writer Dave Margosius had been a strong presence in our community all winter. One of our many good regulars, Mr. Rick McNair, helped get us into the annual May Works program. Glenn Downey joined us from Ontario. Another regular, friend Sheldon, arranged for us to have opera. Prairie Fire Magazine was always a huge presence at Heaven Art and Book Cafe. On May 29th, the Manitoba Writers Guild had a little send-off party for Dave Margosius, visiting writer in residence. That last weekend in May, there was a national gathering of writers in Winnipeg, and we were fortunate to have two evenings of joint readings. Our letter carrier, K. 
came for lunch every day and always had something good to say. We were fortunate to have Dion Brand come through heaven again. Our June art exhibit had been a show of paintings by artist Don Bjornsson. July, everyone was at the folk festival or sitting outside on the patios. This July 31st evening was a send-off to two dear friends moving away. Our August art exhibit was really fun. It was wonderful to have a big story about books in the daily paper and to be featured as part of it. The September exhibit called Street Work were photographs by Reed Osland and Dylan Sheehan. Once again, we played a role in the annual Corridon Street Festival. Local publisher Turnstone Press gave us many launches, including a new book of poetry by Sylvia Legree. A page from our ninth newsletter to members. A page in the Manitoba Writers Guild's annual conference program happening September 20th to 22nd. The conference included readings, this one sponsored by Prairie Fire magazine. And this evening reading sponsored by the Manitoba Association of Playwrights. Our ad on the back cover of that year's conference program. We had a lively Saturday evening celebration and were treated to words and music by several of our regulars. And then cake. The October art exhibit was an excellent show. Events kept coming. Fall was always a busy time. A lively launch for a book called Cupboard Love. On tour promoting fugitive pieces, Ann Michaels gave us an amazing reading. This Saturday evening event also included Christiana Gunners, who got away before the pictures were taken. Sunday afternoon, two friends launched their new books. Mr. Riordan was on tour promoting a book called Out Our Way, and we asked Priscilla Reimer to open for him. Miss Wiseman launched a very wonderful YA novel called A Place Not Home. Local artist Robert Pasternak brought an enlightened talk. Earth Story, Jane Cahill, Mary Louise Chown, and Kay Stone were back with harp music again. Thanks to Anders Taskins and Prairie Fire, we had another good lineup ahead. Writers were often dropping by, sometimes brought in by their publicity persons to sign copies of their books in our store. Here's W.P. Kinsella. It was always good to be included on author tours.
It was good to have Per Braft help nurture new writers at these readings. A Sunday, November 10th reading event. Mr. Cooley launched a new collection called Sunfall. Just one example of a, an established writer nurturing a more budding writer. Mary D. McKaylee was a visiting poet. Doug and Donna opened the evening. Local writer Ms. Swetman chats with visiting poet Betsy Struthers. Rue Borson was entertaining during and after her reading. This was our November art exhibit. This is the corrected schedule for the December Sunday readings. Two visiting writers meet in heaven and become chummy. Oddly, one of them was here before. From their third floor studio, this group of artists brought a wonderful show to our second floor location. Visiting writer establishes rapport with local writer. Writer and photographer at the launch of Coming Home. Can you hear the clink? Two friends enjoy a coffee. Stephen Brzezinski, known as Mick Burrs, was in town for this reading with Phyllis Gottlieb. Friend and Professor Gerhard Entz brought history to heaven. Families were always welcome in heaven. Regretfully, we never did complete the heaven chapbook, although we did get quite a few good submissions. <laughs>